Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's been a very exciting weekend and this is the Monday after the launch of Flawless Moisturizer. And we've been exhilarated, we've been stretched, um, and we've been asked lots and lots of questions, which prompted me to think about doing this video, which answers the question, how do I go about building a skincare routine when I have sensitive skin? So I thought I would share with you the approach that I take when I see patients with sensitive skin in the clinic. And if you can imagine, I see people who are potentially at quite an extreme end of the spectrum of skin sensitivity. And more often than not, it's in context of rosacea or perioral dermatitis. So a true inflammatory skin problem, but there is also a group who just have challenging skin. So with a tendency perhaps to redness or burning or stinging without necessarily a pattern of skin disease that fits under one of those common definitions. And I guess I believe that almost everyone can benefit from a really structured skincare approach. And here are the things that I do with people who have these particular issues. So the first thing is to establish a good basic routine and to eliminate products that are red flags or potentially irritating or potentially combining to irritate. So sometimes it's not about one product alone, it's about the whole um, routine um, in totality. So perfected basics is a term I coined when we launched the moisturizer because I think that all of us want to find those basic items that can go in our skincare routine that we almost don't really think about. Um, I liken it to sort of finding the perfect white t-shirt and jeans. And that's because if those basics are in your wardrobe, you kind of just know you've always got a good outfit. You change up your shoe, you know, those sneaker to go casual or a heel to make it smarter, but it always looks good and it kind of always works for you and it's suited to you. So finding the right cleanser and moisturizer are fundamental to your skincare routine. So what does that mean if you've got sensitive skin? Obviously, it means avoiding things like uh, alcohol, and by alcohol, I mean denatured alcohol, typically the kind of stuff you'd find in a toner that's got astringent properties, potentially. Um, I mean things like fragrance, and I generally mean essential oils as well. Now, um, our cleanser and moisturizer are both designed to be suitable for people with sensitive skin, but if you're super, super sensitive and you found that no matter what you do, you find your skin sensitive, burny, stingy, um, the go-to products we recommend in the clinic in that situation are La Roche-Posay uh, Tolerian Domo Cleanser, um, to cleanse, obviously, um, and a Ven Recovery Cream, and that comes in a light and a rich format. So. That's the place that I start from. Um, get rid of everything else. Literally, I will frequently tell patients to pack everything up, put it in a box, bury it in the garden, put it under the stairs in a cupboard, I don't know what, but just take it away so you're not tempted to dip in um, on a weak moment. The other thing is just to think about your fragrance, um, oh, sorry, your makeup base. So avoid fragranced makeup bases. And again, I like brands like uh, NARS, EX1 are both good for both being non-clogging and fragrance free. Um, but if you've got a base that's working for you and um, without trouble, that's fine too. But I would stay away from fragrance cosmetics where possible. So if those are new products for you, what I suggest you do is to give that at least one week to see how your skin behaves. And assuming that that all goes out without a hitch, that shows you you've got a good, strong place to start from. So you've got your basics right, the next thing to think about is sunscreen because we know that daily sunscreen is important and we know that it's a vital part of any good anti-aging routine and we also know that if you're going to use actives like retinoids, alpha hydroxy acids and so on, you need sun protection built into your routine. Now super sensitive skin will tend to do best with physical sunscreen, so that means looking for um, filters that contain uh, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. We have done videos on this before and I will put some um, good suggestions down below. And I have to say that a lot of my patients do very well with tinted uh, physical sunscreens. And um, firstly because 
there is uh, the potential with physical block to look slightly white or um, gray toned on the skin so the tint can really help with that appearance the second thing is that if you're naturally prone to a bit of redness that those um, tinted sunscreens are actually very good as camouflage and just taking everything down a notch so um, good brands to look for neostrata jan marini a patient recently showed me a paul's choice one that was very good actually um, i'll look the name of that up so that's really quite a useful tool to have in your um, in your skincare kit. Um, alternatives that are non-tinted, I like the L to MD UV Pure um, or Physical Sunscreen. So next you have to give that long enough to make sure that that's actually okay for your skin. And again, I would give it another week. So your sunscreen's gone on okay, you've got your basics working for you, your makeup is fine. You might be feeling bold and ready to add in some active ingredients. Now, which one you should choose depends on what your concerns are. And I think the key thing is that whatever one you approach um, and start with is to do it in a really measured, slow, gradual, consistent way. I'm going to link to a video that I did recently about how to do that in a way that is really non-scary. So. The key things I think are to quantify what you're using and I talk about my half a fingertip, my fingertip amount, you know, the half a fingertip and fingertip being a, a portion of a line of cream as long as your fingertip, that line being about three centimeters long. Um, and using my 13 dot technique so that you distribute product evenly over your skin, assuming that's an appropriate way to use the active that you're using. Um, to give you a nice thin even layer and pay attention to areas like the creases of the nose too close to the lips or indeed the corners of the mouth um, and any lines that you might have where product might settle if you don't take care to spread it evenly over your skin that's something that any experienced retinoid user will have experienced at some point in time where it's just maybe caught in a nasolabial crease and it's um, made the skin a little red and sore so just consciously why any areas like that. Um, if you want to be super cautious, you can layer um, your product over moisturizer, which has been applied a few minutes beforehand, and that buffers the effect. You get less being um, absorbed into your skin, which can often lead to much less irritancy. And that's something I recommend to patients very frequently if they're having trouble, particularly in winter when dry skin can be a real issue. Um, what else can you do? If you're applying it straight to cleanse skin rather than doing it over moisturizer, I would still recommend doing simple things like putting moisturizer around the eyes and maybe applying some lip balm, which again will protect areas that we know are naturally already prone to dryness. I call these moisturizer goggles, um, just to make people remember and think about it. Um, anyone again who's used a retinoid and accidentally done this, and move retinoid onto their eyelid unintentionally and um, knows what I'm talking about. Then think about the frequency. If you're super nervous, do it every third day and just moisturize on the nights in between. For instance, I'm talking about night time. Um, so every third night, if that's okay at two weeks, every second night, if that's okay at two weeks, every night. And if you find that you need to go even slower than that, maybe you know upgrade every uh, three to four weeks, um, go as slow or as fast as you feel comfortable and your skin will tell you if you're doing things the right way. Um, and then once you're built up slowly but surely to daily use of whatever active, um, or indeed you found the maximum frequency that you can use for your skin, and that might just be three nights a week or four nights a week, but it's still better if you're using the right actors than no nights a week. Um, and then you might try and think about increasing the quantities over time as well. And I think for a lot of people, that fingertip quantity is a good amount. So it also helps you gauge how long a product's going to last you as well. So consistently building up slowly but surely, and listen, this is the most important thing I'll say, do it one active at a time. You so need to find your limit for any particular active. Um, oftentimes, I'm very pleasantly surprised by how well people who have had problems with skincare and jumped around and really struggled to find the right things, when you really pair everything back and you get rid of unnecessary products and unnecessary ingredients, we can be pleasantly surprised that people like that can actually end up using prescription retinoids without any real problems. So go slow, 
you know, don't confuse the data by putting too many different products in the mix at any one time. Um, stick to one, max it out so you're getting the maximum benefits from that one thing before you think about putting any, anything else into the mix. Okay, so that went well and you're now using active number one successfully. Repeat, do exactly the same again. So if you started off with your nighttime routine and for example are using a retinoid at night, you might want to think about vitamin C in the morning for anti-aging or you might want to think about azelaic acid if you're prone to breakouts or you might just want to think about niacinamide because it's a good counterpart to retinoids in blemish prone anti-aging concerned skin. Um, and do it exactly the same way and give yourself all that time, um, reduce frequency at the beginning, building up to daily use as, as comfortable and then increasing the quantities. And then the final point to make is that if you're mega, mega concerned that you've actually been having allergic reactions to skincare, bear in mind it's incredibly difficult to tease this out. Um, you know, even with the greatest education, sometimes it's just really complicated. And when you're using, you know, two or three products, all of a sudden you've got a list of ingredients, even with the simplest of products of maybe 15 to 20 ingredients going on your skin and you can be allergic to just about anything. So I think the way to approach um, someone who's been having perhaps a true um, uh, redness and irritation from skincare before even beginning to think about putting a new product on your facial skin, um, consider doing what we call a rote test, which involves putting a small amount of product somewhere where there is thin skin um, and doing it on three days consecutively. And it's not a precise test, it's certainly not equivalent to a proper patch test that we do when we're looking for um, a, a cause of, of eczema in someone who's got a history of possible allergy um, to things like skin care. But it's a good crude test before you start thinking about applying something on your face if you're super nervous. So you can do it here, you might even do it with a little patch behind the ear, somewhere discreet and well away from facial skin. Now, just because you don't get a, an irritant response or something that looks like it might be an allergy on, on your um, other site, the, the place that you're doing this test on, it doesn't preclude you having a problem with facial skin because of course we get other issues aside from um, allergic reactions. Of course, we get seborrheic eczema, we get rosacea, we get all sorts of skin conditions that are just particular to facial skin. But as I say, if you're particularly worried that you're reacting strongly to one particular ingredient, a test that's well away from facial skin may be the safest place for you to start. And if that does show suggestions of a reaction, then you probably need to be seen for proper assessment and patch testing for contact allergy is the way to go to discuss that with your GP or dermatologist. So there you have it, my approach to handling delicate sensitive skin. I hope you enjoyed that and if you find it useful please hit subscribe, share with friends or someone you think it might be helpful for um, and leave us your comments down below. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.